When we use computers to save our work, our videos, our photos, our documents, we generate a huge amount of data and we require a huge amount of storage, which we'll often store on a bunch of different hard drives over time. This is my giant box of hard drive storage shame. Or maybe it's just a hoard. I don't know. The point is I have years worth of data on many, many different hard drives. And carrying all these hard drives around with me is not an option. At the same time, there are many files on these hard drives that I really do want to save and I want to be able to access them now and in the future. I'm guessing that I'm not the only one that has all those hard drives and full of files that I want to keep and access and share. In fact, comment down below and let me know how many external hard drives do you have. Maybe we can become a storage support group and make sure that we're all looking at our hard drives. A challenge with having so many drives is not only that the data is hard to access easily, but the data could be lost forever if anything ever happened to these hard drives. This local storage doesn't really allow for easy access from any place or on any device at all times, and they don't really offer off-site backups because if anything was to happen, I would lose all those hard drives. So what is the solution? The cloud, of course. I'm sure that for many of you watching this video, you're familiar with the concept of cloud storage. It's become quite common over the past few years. You save your files to a cloud provider like Google Drive or OneDrive or Dropbox. Then you can access these files from anywhere that you have an internet connection. This is very convenient. Files go up, files come down, and we have everything saved in the cloud that we can access from anywhere. But do you know which cloud storage provider is the best? Because we want a provider that offers low cost, the ability to share and collaborate with others, unlimited storage, and security. And do any of the providers do all of that? Well, you might be surprised to learn that there's an alternative to the common cloud storage solutions above, and they do things a little bit better in my opinion. I only very recently discovered them, and I really do wish I would have known about them before. So today I'm excited to show you the sponsor of this video, a company that leads in all aspects of what makes a cloud storage useful, flexible, and secure, Sync.com. I was very impressed with them, and I'm happy to be able to share my experiences with them with you. So you can see some of the things that I've done and how I'm using them now as my main cloud storage provider. Sync.com actually gives us a lot of the things that we look for in cloud storage. Sync offers unlimited storage, so we have a lot of space. They offer their services at a lower cost, so we're saving money. They allow for collaboration of files with others through file sharing, which is very important. And they offer security options that some of the others do not. Let's take a look at sync.com and how it overcomes some of the challenges that I face when it comes to cloud storage and also how it can open up some possibilities that are going to be very useful for me. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to www.sync.com slash frank. If you use the slash frank, you'll actually get a bit of a discount if you sign up for one of their plans. Thank you very much sync.com for doing that. So I'm going to sign into my account. The first challenge that I often have when it comes to cloud storage is having enough space. But space is not an issue with Sync.com. They have the Teams Plus Unlimited plan with unlimited space. In fact, if you look at the plan, you can see they have a whole bunch of different features around security and privacy, data protection, productivity, administration tools, and support. This is a fantastic plan because of the unlimited space. I'm going to be able to coordinate with very large files, take my entire box of old hard drives and load it up to sync.com, and I'm going to be able to coordinate with team members and share different files. As this channel grows, I know that I'm going to need to be able to share a lot of files like video files back and forth amongst the team, and that's a great thing that I can do with sync.com. In fact, if you hit the like button down below, you'll help this channel grow by telling the algorithm that it should push this out to more people. So thank you very much for that. When I log into sync.com, you'll notice that I have a nice clean web interface. I have a number of options across the top for menus. I can go in and upload files, create new shared folders. I can actually share amongst my team members as well as share through a link. I can create files. I can show deleted files and recover them. There's a lot that I can do here. I can also go in and look at different events so I can see who's been sending files up to my site. And I can also manage my users here as well. So there's a lot we can do. 
But before I work with the web interface, what I'll normally do is go into my account here and install apps. And I can install Sync on Windows, on older versions of Windows that are 32-bit. I can install it on the Mac, my iPhone and my iPads. I can install it on my Android devices. And I do that. I install it on all my devices. Because once I download it, and I've already installed it on this machine, you just quickly run the installation program, you authenticate with your account, and it creates this little folder called Sync. Anything in this folder will be automatically synchronized to and from your Sync account. So here you can see I've got a number of folders here. Here on my local storage, I have a number of folders. They're the same folders. And if I go in here and say, okay, let's create a new folder, and I'll just start it with a bunch of A's in order to make sure that it goes to the top, what will happen is this folder will be synchronized with sync.com. So you can see the folder appears here. Now, this is very useful even if you only have one device, but it becomes incredibly useful if I have multiple devices. So for example, I've installed sync.com on my Mac as well, and notice that that folder is here in Finder. So now I've got this folder on my Mac and on my PC. For myself, this becomes extremely useful because I might be working on something on my Mac and then I want to go and work on it on my PC and it just synchronizes that folder, hence the clever name of sync. So, but if you go in here, you'll notice that all of these are stored locally as well as being synchronized to the cloud. So I've got them in both locations. Sometimes if I'm working on a project, my files can get pretty large. I've got a lot of media files, 4K video and such. And when I'm done with a project, I don't want them to be here on my local system anymore. Well, what I can do is I can move them to the vault. So let's say, for example, I was working on some course development and I'm no longer working on this particular course. I can choose that particular file. I'll choose this one as well. And I can move those over to the vault. When I move them over to the vault, it continues to allow me to have access to those files through sync.com. But now what's happened is on my local system, those files are no longer stored locally. But if I do need to get access to them, and we'll work with my many A files here. So here we go. So this folder here, I don't have any files in that particular one, but you can see here that that folder that I just created and moved over to the vault, still available. I can still share it, I can still access it, and that's going to still be available to me, but it's no longer synchronized with my local device. And if I go back to my Mac, you can see here that it's also been removed from local storage on the Mac. So that's a very handy way to have what I consider sort of a hot storage, which are files that are synchronized to my local devices, and what I would consider more of an archival or a vault-based storage that I can go and get older projects that I'm not currently working on. I find this to be very, very useful, especially when I'm doing video stuff, because what it allows me to do is maybe I'm filming on one system and then I'm editing on another system, or maybe I want to look at some files on my mobile device. I can do all that by using that little app that I install. It's this very quick installation. Now, there are other things that we can do as well that are super helpful as well. So, for example, I have this folder here. I don't, I don't really have anything in that particular folder. But let's say I'm doing certain different types of projects and stuff. So, for example, I have this project file here. I can actually go in and I can go into version history on here as well. So let's say, for example, I had some video files, I was editing them, synchronizing them on a regular basis. What I can do is I can download it because this one's currently sitting in the vault. I can download it, I can move it over to hot storage or the file storage, which will synchronize it across my local devices. And I can also go into the version history and I can go back in time and restore previous versions of this file. This is incredibly useful because if you're working on something and maybe you go in the wrong direction, this gives you the ability to restore a previous version and start working with the file as the way it was previously. So if you go to sync.com forward slash Frank, you can compare the different plans, find the one that's right for you. What I really like is that I can put all those files into the vault on sync.com without taking up any local storage. And then as I need those files for different projects or if I want to work with them, just by putting them into the file section of sync.com, they're going to be distributed across to the local storage of all my devices where I've installed the sync app. So I'm impressed with sync.com. 
And in the description, you'll find a link to sync.com slash Frank so that you can try it out for yourself.